Good. My time has come. You must believe. Master! One eternity later. All right, good day one and all. I'm coming to you live from the Tiny Whoop training grounds and today we have something very special. Today we're gonna check out the new Beta FPV 5-in-1 flight controller. So the 4-in-1 version has already been on the market for like a month or so. And uh, yeah, so this is the one that I've been very excited for. So let's go through a few features and uh, see how it stacks up on the track. Just gonna give a quick run through of the parts I used on this build. Of course, we have the new Beta FPV Meteor 65 airframe, and uh, we also have just any random motors I could get my hands on. These are the Happy Model We Bleed FPV motors, if I'm not wrong, um, 26.5k. And uh, we have the, of course, the Gemfan 1219S Werner Green props. And uh, I'm using a tiny boot pinch camera and a little stinker mount, as well as a monopole antenna. I think this build is not exactly the lightest it can be. I can definitely get it lighter, but the point is to actually build a drone that's not ridiculously difficult or tedious to build. I want it to be something that is sustainable for people to just slap on in a couple of hours and be able to fly. Here we have it on my crappy wing scale. Honestly, it could be lighter. I think 15.9 grams is decent, but if I put in more effort to do more mods, I think it could go down to about 15.5 15.4 grams, which is already pretty good, I would say. Right, now about board placement. So, I'm gonna pull up a diagram of um, the old 4 one ELRS AIO that we're all very used to using in our builds, and you can see that the BMI gyro is actually located in the front, right? So, the current um, the current modus operandi, I would say, is to rotate the FC by 90 degrees so that um, the BMI gyro is protected from hard crashes. But in this FC, this new one, it's very different. The ICM gyro is placed right at the rear. I'm not sure if it's a design choice to move it out of harm's way in crashes, but I feel that it could actually be a problem because if you see these very minimalistic mounts we use nowadays, they don't offer much protection on the rear of the FC. So I'm afraid that um, a direct hit on the ICM gyro at the rear would actually cause um, some issues, uh, it might even cause the gyro to die. So in my case, what I've done is I've actually rotated the FC by 180 degrees so that, it, I'm not sure if you can see this, but the ICM gyro is right at the side over here underneath the camera mount. So it's in a, it's in a position where no matter how I land or how I hit, um, it's impossible for the ICM gyro to receive a direct hit. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure if this is a better solution. Um, more testing is required. I'll be making a follow-up video about this. But for now, yeah, I'm still experimenting with um, different configurations of how to mount this board. Um, one more consideration is because there's a camera plug right at the top over here. And if you mount the board, um, um, with um, the regular beta FPV canopy, it kind of sits the camera much higher. So that means that um, there's no contact between the camera mount and the board. However, I'm using this little stinker mount, which is very, very, very flush and close to the board itself. Um, there is a possibility that when you mount it the correct front way, it's gonna cause the camera to be lopsided, right? So in this case, that's an another reason why I think I chose to rotate my board by 180 degrees. All right guys, so right now I'm gonna do a pack and I'm gonna show my reactions while flying my first few packs with this new 15.9 gram drone. Let's see how it goes. First impressions, you can feel the lightness very nimble, definitely way more agile than my 16.8 gram build. It is a little harder to control because of how nimble it is. There is so little momentum that it's very easy to turn. Oh, I think I just crashed into the table. But anyway, yeah, let's do some good laps. That was a good ladder.
Alright guys, so that was the flight test and before I go, there's one more thing I want to say that in the 4-in-1 version of this FC, there was an issue where the VTX was over outputting power at 200 milliwatts on some channels but I'm happy to announce that for this version, they are using a different VTX uh, hardware, um, different chips so it's likely that there will not be this issue and they are releasing a fix on the 4-in-1 version as well so I would say that within the next um, one month or few weeks um, any FCs that you buy from Beta FPV should be race legal and race compliant although I'm sure my friends like Custom FPV will be all too happy to test it on their um, Immersion RC Power Wands. So yeah, I think um, that's all. I'm just, just going to leave you guys with this information. Feel free to leave a like down and leave some comments with some uh, thoughts about this video and how can I just introduce these beta FE products better in the future. Thanks for watching guys.